Hello and welcome to lesson 14.3 in the Alice tutorial series. Uh, today I think we're going to be doing one of the more exciting programs that we've done thus far. Um, we're going to continue using parameters, but we're also going to integrate random number generation into this. So this will be your first introduction into random numbers, and I think we might end up doing a video later on some of the more nuances of creating random numbers, but we are going to be doing that in this video. Um, Random numbers are really cool when you get into interactive programs and want random events to occur. You, you want your user to stay on their toes so that they don't know exactly what's going to happen. So the program we use today is going to pair parameters and random numbers together to create what I think is a fairly interesting program. Now, because of the time it's going to take to set up and build this program, this will probably end up being a two-part video. So we'll probably have a 14.3 and a 14.4 before moving on to our next lessons. But this will be the introduction to random numbers coupled with parameters, two really important programming concepts. So we've got a really neat program to build. Let's go ahead and get started with it. Um, let's head over to Alice and get started with lesson 14.3, Parameters and Random Numbers. So here we are in our new Alice world, and before we can get started in this Alice world, we're going to have to do uh, some, some background work. I, I have a series of maybe five or six different pictures that I want to go pull off of Google Images. Now you've seen me pull pictures off of Google Images before, so uh, I'm going to go do that off camera and then I'll show you the pictures that I download so that you can go out and find your own similar pictures. Now making sure you get the exact same pictures isn't what's important in this lesson, just making sure you have some images that have similar traits so that you can follow along in this example. So I'm going to go pull those images uh, off of the image service right now and I'll show you what I got when we come back. Okay, so I'm back from my search of Google Images, and I found uh, seven images that I'm going to be using for the upcoming tutorial. Now again, you don't need to find the exact same in images, but uh, similar ones would be terrific. The first thing I did was I tried to find three backgrounds that are kind of large-scale landscapes. Nothing that has close-up on images, so no buildings in the background or no cars in the background, but I found this ocean scene that kind of had a sunset that was nice. Uh, in addition, I found uh, a space background that I wanted to use, and I found a blue sky image that I wanted to use. So I found these three background images that I think were just perfect for what we'll be doing, and I wanted to intentionally for all three of them to be pretty different from one another, though you could really have three blue sky backgrounds if you wanted. So these are the three images that I went on and found, so you want to find some similar images and save those. In addition, uh, I found a series of four cockpit images that I wanted to use. I found a generic helicopter right here that had transparency values in this white surrounding area. Um, I found a more advanced spaceship looking cockpit. Um, it, it was from like an X-Wing website. I, I don't remember exactly where I got this one, but uh, when I did a search for spaceshipcockpit.png, this was up here. And again, it had the correct transparency values. I found a large airplane or a large spaceship one that I kind of liked, and uh, this one right here, which is one that we demoed in Lesson 4.2 4 on how to download billboards. The only thing you want to make sure is when you get these cockpits, make sure you're doing a search for uh, PNG at the end, and that they're proper transparent images. When you look on Google Images, you'll find that the images that have the proper transparency value will have this like shaded checkerboard pattern where the image will show through. So find about two or three good backgrounds and two or three good cockpits, download those, and then we'll head back to Alice and get them imported into our world. So now that we have our images downloaded, let's head back to Alice and the first thing I'm going to do to this world is I don't want the ground. So right click on your ground and just delete it from your world so you have this kind of ugly blue screen. We need to import each of our backgrounds. So file, make a billboard, and then go to wherever you saved your textures. 
and import each of them. So we've got my blue sky background here. Let's grab the ocean background next. So parameters, ocean background. And finally, we're going to import our space background. So textures and space. So I have my three images all kind of laying on top of one another. So they don't look super nice right now. I'm going to end up positioning these in the correct spot. But before I do that, um, I want each of these to be better organized. I know that all three of these represent backgrounds. So right click and create a new group. And you'll have a folder named group. I'm going to right click on that and rename it and call this backgrounds. Then I'm going to take each of my backgrounds that I just imported and throw them into the backgrounds folder. So now I can expand this and I can see each of my backgrounds. Next, one at a time, I'm going to take each of these images, click on add objects so I can, can manipulate them and get them positioned properly in the background. So I'm going to start by going method, turn to face, camera, and let's position the blue sky correctly. So we'll kind of expand it up a little bit, bring it down. And once I have this position so that the sky is correct, I'm pretty good there. I'm going to take the property and change is showing to false to make it invisible. I'm going to repeat this process for each of my other backgrounds. So let's get the space background, turn to face, camera, Let's resize it and bring it down so that it kind of serves as a better background. Perfect. Now we'll take our space background and is showing set to false. And finally, let's take this ocean background method, turn to face, camera, resize it, and bring it down a little bit. So right about there is good. And with that, let's go ahead and make it invisible by turning is showing to false. So now I, I have my three images all positioned and I can turn them on or off depending on which one that I want to see at any given time. I'm going to repeat this process for my cockpits. So file, make billboard, and let's pull in the helicopter helicopter cockpit first. Now that that's in the world, I'm going to right click on it, turn to face, camera. And instead of just resizing this one where it is, I'm going to raise this off the, so it's kind of center of the screen. And I'm going to pull this one towards me because I want it right next to the camera as best I can. So we'll continue pulling it forward, move it up a little bit, and that looks about right. So pretty good there. I've got my helicopter cockpit. I'm going to organize this just like I did the backgrounds. So right click and create a new group and then rename this cockpits and take our helicopter cockpit and drag it in there. Now that the helicopter cockpit is kind of in the right place, I need to do two things to each of the cockpits. I am going to turn is showing to false, but in addition, I'm going to change the vehicle property of each of the cockpits to the camera. This way, when I move the camera, the cockpit will stay in position. Now that I have the vehicle property correctly set, set is showing to false. And we're going to repeat this for each of the other three cockpits. Since you've already seen how to do that once, it's the same process. We'll go ahead and speed our way through adding the next three cockpits. Okay, so we're all set up and good to go there. 
I'm just putting this last cockpit into the cockpits directory. Um, you may have noticed there, if you watch that time lapse, one of my images didn't have a correct transparency value, so I didn't check that before I imported it. So the, the large airplane background wasn't working correctly. Since I don't necessarily need it for this demo, I'm just going to head go ahead and leave that off. So you might find that you have some problem with those images, but we have three usable cockpit images, and I've gone through and made all of them have the vehicle property set to camera and is showing set to false. So we have all of our billboards, all of our backgrounds, all of our cockpits in the world and ready to go. So let's go back to our programming window and create a new world level method. So we've got world selected. Let's go to methods and click create new method. This is going to be display screen or something similar to that. And I'm going to have some dummy values in here right now. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is set blue sky. And the blue sky is showing will be set to true. And then I'll select one of the cockpits and let's select the helicopter cockpit and set that is showing to true. Now if I go to my first method and drag our new method into display screen, when I hit play, you can see that we've got the blue sky background that shows up and then the helicopter background shows up. There's a little bit of a delay right there. When I hit play, the blue sky shows up and then the helicopter shows up. I want this to happen instantaneously, so I'm going to throw the set is showing properties in a do together statement and I'm going to set the duration to zero seconds. By doing this, what I'm telling Alice is I want both the blue sky and the helicopter cockpit to show up at the same time instantaneously. So now, as soon as I hit play, and sometimes my video kind of messes up while I'm screen recording, but as soon as the video plays, both the cockpit and the image uh, of the background should be showing. Now, of course, I want the ability to control which cockpit and which background shows up. To do this, I'm going to create a new parameter. This will be an object parameter, and the first one will be called sky. Then, instead of having the blue sky show, I want the sky to be set showing to true. And this could be any of the three skies that I've imported into my backgrounds folder. Secondly, I don't always want the helicopter cockpit. I may want any of these three to show up. I'm going to create a new parameter, and this parameter is going to be called cockpit. It will also be an object parameter, and we'll drag that over where the helicopter cockpit is now showing. So now, in my first method, I can select a sky from my list of backgrounds. So let's say we want an ocean background with a high-tech plane cockpit. When I hit play, I'm getting the ocean background with the high-tech plane cockpit. And I can switch this up really easily. All of a sudden we want him in the blue sky. I change this to blue sky. And now our plane is flying in the blue sky. And if I want this plane to be going in space, I can change this to space background really quickly. And now all of a sudden this uh, high-tech plane is in space. Now, similarly, I can take the cockpit that I want showing and we can change the spaceship to be in space, which may look pretty cool. So we have our spaceship in space, and I can change the background that he's in as well. So if I want my spaceship to be on the ocean, hit play, and now I have a spaceship on the ocean. By adding parameters to our display screen, we've now given ourselves the ability to put any background and any cockpit together. Now at the beginning of this lesson I told you that we would be working with random numbers and thus far we haven't really mentioned anything about random numbers. So here's how we're going to start doing this. We have our display methods, uh, our display screen method all set ready to go so we can switch the sky and cockpit at will using parameters. We now need to create a placeholder for random numbers. We're going to do this with world variables. Make sure that you have world selected on the top left Go to Properties, and we're going to create two new variables. First off, we're going to create a variable called 
background seed. And this will be a number variable that sets with a default value of 1. We'll be eventually changing this. Uh, we need to also create a new variable called cockpit seed. And that will also be a number variable that starts with a value equal to 1. So we've got these two variables that we're going to be able to use uh, in our random number generation. Okay, everybody, we have our background seed and cockpit seed variables all set up, so those should be good to go. But random numbers themselves are a pretty in-depth lesson, or it's, it's more than two or three minutes, and I don't want this video to run long. So we've now used this video to take one more stab at uh, practicing parameters, switching the sky and the cockpit uh, based on a method call. Uh, the next video Lesson 14.4 is going to center on the idea of creating a random number to randomly pick a sky and randomly pick an ocean together. So rather than try and speed through that in this video, I really want to take some time and look at how random numbers work in Alice. So we're going to go ahead and cut the video off right here. As always, if you have any questions about your Alice world or something that's not working for you, or maybe you need some ideas for something that you could be working on within this realm, I will be happy to help you out. Just leave those questions in the comments and I will definitely get to them and uh, help out any way that I can. Thank you so much for watching the Alice tutorial series, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.